Our next example considers a carbon capture system modeled in Aspen Fidelis. In the next demonstration, we will run the base case model and evaluate the results relative to a predefined carbon capture goal. We will then design and execute new models featuring changes to the process design. For this example, the design changes come in the form of redundant components. After running each scenario, we will assess how system output and reliability have changed and identify which are potential candidates for inclusion in the carbon capture model. This is a model of a carbon capture system developed in Aspen Fidelis. It was created manually in Fidelis using an Aspen Hysis model as a blueprint. As we can see from the flow diagram, the process can be conceptualized in six phases, each of which is emphasized by a different colored rectangle. In the first phase, our system combines carbon dioxide containing streams from a boiler, a gas turbine, and other sources before sending it to the pretreatment stage. Pretreatment consists of cooling the source stream and removing oxygen. When finished, the stream is ready for carbon capture. The carbon capture system centers around an absorption with chemical solvent MEA. It results in a clean exhaust stream and a carbon-containing stream that continues on to the water removal stage. Our process eliminates water by combining the carbon dioxide mixture with triethylene glycol. At the end of this stage, the stream of interest is more than 99.9 .9 mole percent carbon dioxide. From there, a series of compressors and coolers produce the dry compressed carbon dioxide stream, which can be exported or stored. In total, we expect our system, over a 20 year period, to capture a minimum of 409,000 tons per year of dry compressed carbon with a probability of 80% or greater. Let's call this our production goal. The first thing we'll want to do with our Fidelis model is to determine whether the base case design meets this goal. To start, open the Set Run Parameters window from the simulation group. Let's set the life cycle duration to 175,200 hours, equivalent to 20 years, and run the simulation over 100 life cycles. Allow the process some time to finish. As more life cycles complete, we will see the convergence of captured dry compressed carbon expressed in relative terms to the system's nominal capacity. When the run has completed, open the results and navigate to the Pipe Production tab. Toggle the histogram view so that data is displayed on an annual basis. It is apparent that the base case falls short of the production target, having only captured 404,923 tons per year of carbon. We can look to increase this number by identifying the units responsible for the predicted shortage in the Culpability tab. The bar graph and table indicate that the highest relative culpabilities belong to pumps P200, P201, and P300. Let's examine whether adding redundancy around these elements enables us to reach our production goal. We would have find three redundancy scenarios and execute simulations for each. In the first configuration, each pump from the base case design is replaced by two pumps, each operating at 50% capacity. In this configuration, both pumps need to be running at the same time. This is indicated in the rate multiplier element. The value of 2 in the dropdown gives us the number of parallel components needed to reach 100% capacity. In a second setup, the two parallel pumps are each capable of processing 100% of the flow, enabling one to remain in cold standby while the other operates. The third scenario involves adding a third pump, where each has a 50% capacity. In this setup, two pumps run simultaneously while the third remains in cold standby. In the interest of time, each of these flow sheets has been run. 
Looking first at the results of the 2 by 50 scenario, we can see that adding one redundant component and reducing the capacity of both does not allow the production target to be met. Our system produces just 405,250 tons per year of dry compressed carbon. A quick glance at the culpability graph supports the argument that the blame for the loss in performance again falls on the pump units. Moving to the 2 by 100 case, we see more encouraging results. Here, our system is given an 80% chance to exceed the original capacity and meet the production target of 409,000 tons per year of captured carbon. With the increase in pump capacity, we see a significant drop in relative culpability for the pump units. Finally, in the 3 by 50 scenario, we obtain similar results to the 2 by 100 case. The estimated capture of 410,294 tons per year of dry compressed carbon meets the system target, and this again aligns with drastically reduced relative culpabilities for the pump units relative to the base case. Our analysis of redundancy scenarios has afforded us two viable design changes. We can use Aspen Capital Cost Estimator to determine, between these, which is the more convenient.